as Ramesses I. He was the first king of the 19th dynasty. He was the son of a troop commander, so he had lots of uh, military contacts. His uncle was called Kaam Weset, and he was an army officer. He also had connections to the harem of Amun. And of course, there was a relative called Hugh, uh, Huey, who was the viceroy of Cush. And that's his link to General Horemheb or King Horemheb, because it's not what you know, it's who you know, especially in the ancient world. So he was uh, elevated uh, by Horemheb through those connections. It's interesting, isn't it? Nothing much has changed in any civilization anywhere in the world. Ramesses was also the high priest of Set. That's interesting because Set and Horus are the two opposites, but together they bring uh, an equilibrium, mart, order out of chaos. Now, why did Horemheb choose uh, Ramesses? Well, he had a son who was Seti. Uh, serving in the army, and he also had a grandson. So from Horemheb's point of view, this is a man who can provide a lineage, and the lineage is all a continuancy throughout a particular dynasty. So that was a good uh, selection by uh, King Horemheb. So when Ramesses I became king, he was only king for a couple of years, so he immediately appointed his son, Seti, who had become Seti I, as crown prince of Egypt. His grandson, Ramesses, who would later be known as Ramesses II, or Ramesses the Great, uh, was given domestic du uh, duties. And one of those domestic duties was to complete the second pylon at Karnak. Now, as you can imagine, uh, ruling Egypt for one to two years um, wasn't a great deal of time. He sent Seti I on several military campaigns into Syria. We don't have many details of them, only that Seti le led the army um, and obviously there was a worry about Hittite influence. So the, the, those may have been the considerations for going on these mini tours or campaigns as they called them. Ramesses is the, the first commissioned a tomb to be cut in the Valley of the Kings. Now, it's one of the smallest tombs for a royal king, KV-16. It's got a descending passageway which leads down into a burial chamber. Now, we have a whole new different concept here. Hormheb was the one who established that you would have a straight tomb and then when you were on your deathbed, they would enlarge the bottom of the uh, corridor into a burial chamber and that's why they're called tea tombs because it has a central access leading into a burial chamber and Ramesses the first went along exactly the same idea however when the miners were chipping out all that rock all that shale okay for the descending passageway Instead of spending lots of time smoothing the walls over, which would have been grinding work, a new approach in this one. Plaster it with gypsum plaster and then put your paintings on top of the gypsum plaster. So that's what happened from um, tomb, tomb building or tomb mining and deck. I prefer to think of it as mining and decoration rather than building. So that's what happened from Emesis the first time onwards through the uh, 19th and then the 20th dynasty. That's how they made these tombs. First thing to look at in this tomb is the image of Ramesses the first. Now he came to the throne late in life. He only ruled Egypt for one to two years. Look how young he is. All of these kings in this new kingdom want to look like young men in the afterlife and if you had an image in your tomb of what you wanted to look like in the afterlife then that's how you'd be so if you was youthful athletic with a six-pack that's how he's going to look for the rest of eternity 
So, Ramesses the first is led by Horus. Remember, I always said, uh, I said in previous videos about that journey into the underworld. So, in the underworld, it was very dangerous. You had to get through all those the, all those uh, gateways. In fact, the text that is on um, the walls of Ramesses the first is called the Book of Gates, leading Seti through this journey. Once they get through that journey, then you need to go before Osiris. You go before Osiris to make your confession. Have you been good to animals? Have you been good to your wife and children? That sort of thing. And then behind Osiris is the Kepra, the manifestation of Ra. That's when your spirit is going to be transformed into an everlasting spirit. So it will empower your spirit to leave your mummified body, travel through the duat, the gateway to the afterlife, to be with the gods and in the afterlife. And then when daytime comes, you come back to your body and you sleep inside your mummified body. You rejuvenate your spirit on all the gifts that are placed in there, all the magical writing that empowers your spirit. That's why I love Egyptian archaeology. Sorry, I get a bit carried away. Sorry about the haircut. My daughter insisted on pod it. Well, I don't know. There we go. I tried to tell her, you know, cut my hair. I won't be Samson anymore. But there you are. And then you have the two names of Ramesses written. His name, his birth name, his prone name, uh, pro, um, his throne name. The everlasting manifestations of Ra. How fantastic does that sound? Um, and what you have here is, from the Egyptian point of view, perfection. You've got order. You've got Ma throughout your tomb. And your name is everlasting. Have a look at the sarcophagus. It's made, a, made out of red quartzite. So it's, it's uh, quarried from uh, quarry around about two or three hundred miles away from Wasset. But there wasn't a lot of time to decorate it. So what they did was they painted the sarcophagus. So they painted on the magical pictures instead of carving into the red quartzite. And then the final picture, of course, is paying homage to the gods. So you are now an everlasting spirit and you are going to dwell with the gods every night time in the afterlife, which is the nighttime sky. That's where the gods are. So you need to pay homage to them. You only do it once, but you need to do it. The tomb was rediscovered um, by Giovanni Belzoni in 1817. And he was uh, a strong man originally from Italy, fled to England or the UK or Great Britain, as it was called then, to escape persecution. And he married an English woman called Sarah Bain. Well, word got to uh, a commissioner, the British consul in Egypt, Henry Salt, about this useful individual. And Henry Salt was um, trying to amass collections which he could uh, sell to uh, national museums in the UK at that time. Because in the 19th century, um, Western Europeans were desperate to create collections of education for the masses within their country. So they, they had um, various individuals going round uh, the ancient world collecting objects uh, which they could house in their museums. So... <sighs> This, this is uh, interesting. The recommendation uh, to Henry Salt uh, that uh, Belzoni could be useful to him came from J.L. Burkhart. And do you know who Burk, uh, what Burkhart is famous for? Rediscovering the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. Now, wow, can you imagine being the first Westerner to go into Petra? when it was a notorious site. Amazing. Yeah. And that is the recommendation. So Henry Salt knew that he would be quite handy. Now, in those days, the West Bank of Luxor was not like it is today. Well, it's still slightly a bit like that. 
it was the local chieftains and sheikhs that ruled uh, the West Bank of Luxor. They had rifles and guns. If you didn't get permission from them before you took anything, you got shot or robbed or both. The Belzoni, first of all, had to negotiate with the local sheikhs that he could remove a bust of Ramesses II from the Ramesseum for Henry Salt. Now, this was over seven tonnes. Wow. Nobody before had managed to move this uh, this huge object. But Bel Belzoni was willing to have a go. And that's why the sheikhs gave him permission. They thought, this mad Italian working for this English monopoly in Cairo, forget it. He's not going to move it. Anyway, Belzoni got the resources from Sol. He employed 130 men and over 17 days they ma managed to move it down to the river and get it on a raft so they could sail it back to Cairo. And that's what uh, you see in the British Museum today. But there is a duplicate. Remember there are two lands of Egypt and to have marked you had to have two of these statues. And only the head and the upper body and the head has survived at the Ramesseum. You can see the other one at the Ramesseum. Now, after he worked for, uh, after he managed to get this colossi of Ramesses onto the raft and it was sailing back to Cairo, Belzoni decided to go off on his own exploring. And he went down to Edfu and Elephantine and Fili and Abu Simbel on this, on this, uh, road trip what well, was a boat trip and he really wanted to see what was available for possible collections collections which he could sell to either Henry Salt or the British Museum and this was the time of the collector in the 19th century the difference between Belzoni and other collectors is that he's really engaging with the ancient history for him it wasn't just about making money. It was about finding out who these people were. In um, the Valley of the Kings, he found KV-17, which is Seti the first tomb. It's the longest tomb that was ever uh, rediscovered. It's 137.19 meters long. Now, I've been in this tomb several times but unfortunately, there was another earthquake about 25 years ago in Luxor. And now that tomb is closed forever. What a shame, because it was an amazing tomb to go and visit. And you needed a whole, well, a long half day or a whole day to actually see that tomb properly. I'll talk more about the tomb when we cover Ceci the First, but not in this video. Belzoni was the first to re-enter Khafra's pyramid at Giza and rubble had covered the entrance. He cleared it away. He was the first one to re-enter after the several robberies in antiquity. Uh, that pyramid was uh, robbed after the Old Kingdom. Then it was sealed up again during the Middle Kingdom. Then it was robbed again during the Second Intermediate Period. Nothing in there, of course. And then it was sealed up again by one of Ramesses II's uh, son, uh, Prince Kawan Kemswe. And uh, when Belzoni Bel 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 got there, it was still sealed. So he was the first one to re-enter Khafra's uh, Pyramid at Giza from the time that uh, Ramesses II son sealed it up in the 19th dynasty. So that's pretty amazing. He um, went to various other sites in Egypt, but uh, he was also called upon to go to different places to amass collections. And unfortunately, he died in 1823 in the kingdom of Benign. Uh, so that's where he actually died. But what a great uh, explorer and collector. Back to Ramesses I. So when Ramesses I died, he was succeeded by his son, Seti I. And Seti I is the great commander. And 
took on the princes of Kadesh, and you'll find out more about that later on. Okay? Please subscribe. Please encourage your friends to visit the channel. Uh, view them if they like. Please leave comments to give me some ideas on uh, how you find these videos. Remember, this is an ongoing developing process. Hopefully things will get better each time I make a new video. And take care of yourself out there. We're still under a lockdown. We're coming out of the lockdown uh, in different parts of the world. And be safe. See you soon. Bye for now.